there's not a lot of research out there. on. There's research out there on 100-year-olds. We found research on that, but we weren't able to find research that talked about future planning or even joy, that kind of thing with 100-year-olds. So I think that's an area of research that we can really add value to. And I'm hoping to see older adults that are not waiting to die. Yeah. The, the centenarians that are saying, I still have time to do some of the things I want to do. Well, and I think we want to keep it small because we really want to focus on their stories and talk about their stories in an in-depth way, not a superficial kind of look at it. So I'm hoping that we could get between six to eight older adults, which I think is doable. Uh, yes. Susan's going to tell us what she's going to be doing. You're kind of a celebrity. Yes. Um. <laughs> we're making a movie. And I know I've had students where they were afraid to walk into the room of an older adult. They'd never spoken to an older adult that wasn't with somebody outside their family, so they didn't know what to say or they didn't, they just assumed they couldn't hear them or couldn't understand. I think our students don't know that they're going to be interested until they see it. How old are you, Mama? Almost 100. Whoa. Almost 100. 101 and a half years old. 102. 100 years. 101. I'm 100 years young. I was born on the farm. I was the last in the log house. 1919, I was born. So were you born in the hospital in Melville or were you born on the farm? Farm. On the farm, wow. I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had no toys like other children, so we made ourselves toys and away we went. So what kinds of toys did you make? A piece of wood for a doll. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was a very happy childhood, very busy, very involved in sports and music, church work, community work. You were a great skater, Mom. Oh yes, skating was my passion. Oh. I was I was a speed skater all my life, actually. Really? Every time there were races, I was in them. <laughs> Tell me about some of your favorite memories from your childhood. It stumps me. <laughs> Walking to the corner store and then buying me an ice cream. What are your favorite memories about growing up in Winnipeg? Oh, baseball. Baseball? No, softball. 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 I like to riding a horse to bring up the cows for the milking. Tell me about the challenges you faced growing up. Whew. There was lots of them. But, yeah, it was pretty, it was tough. It was, it was, it was work. Well, we were waiting for supper, and I had nothing else to do, so I wanted to kick the ball. So I said to Ralph, I'll give you a black eye. Well, the pot, the pot went through the window. <laughs> the pot went through the window. <laughs> oh, dear. We'd go playing ball, and on the way home, when there was the one hill, we could see all the cars in the yard already. Because why was there cars there? Because my mother would always ask everybody out to, to the farm. Well, we had to help with the, feed them all of them. They, they came for a meal. And, and grandmother was known for that, and uh, mom often said they would just cringe when they saw the cars. The last hill when we come, we could see the yaka yeah, yard full of cars. That was it, enough to, to lie down and die. <laughs> you did grow up in the Depression. Well. So there wasn't a lot of time. I didn't know it was a Depression, <laughs> really. At that age, you don't yeah. realize it. Oh, 66. 66.
What is that? My two horses. Oh, these are your horses? Who's the lady in the picture? Is that you in the picture? Mm hmm Well, we took the cream to town, the eggs, to get some living. B five. I-23. Bingo. <laughs> Got bingo? Let's see. Let's see, I'll go check it. Yeah, check it, because I don't know. <laughs> okay. You have a good bingo, Betty. Very good. Can you tell me about when you met your husband? How old were you when you got married? Uh, 27. 27. Going on to 27. Was he cute? What did you? Well, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how long did you know him before you married him? Not too long. How long is that? <laughs> well, let's say a few months. A few months. He was a wonderful person. Yeah. Good hearted. What else can I say? He was a carpenter. He did hotels. Well, pubs, you might as well say. Pubs and cocktail lounges. Cocktail lounges were all the style. And I traveled with him all over. I was just like a gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get married? How old were you? Do you remember? Pretty old. Pretty old. Oh, how old is pretty old? 30. Oh, more, oh, than, th more than 30, Mom. More than 30. Yeah, weren't you like 30, mm, maybe 36? 35. Thir 35, 35, yeah. Remember Dad would sit on the back deck and he'd be shelling peas? We'd have, <laughs> we'd have boxes and boxes of them and beans. Yeah. My husband said when we got married, you don't work. That was that. It sounds crazy, but I, I got sick of not working. It was nothing to do. Yeah, it was 65. That would make me 40. 45, I think, when I got my divorce. But no children. No, I wasn't blessed with children. Oh, okay. I had a way of fun, but... What did you like about Peter? I left him. <laughs> Why? What? Yeah, very good heart. Okay. And good looking? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was working on the navigational requirements for the ill-famed Arrow. It was rather a stressful time, actually, because he often worked at home on plans, and if we had to go out at night to any play cards or anything, plans and everything had to be rolled up and put into my purse, which I grabbed with both hands as if a Russian gun was pointing at my back. If we, if we sat down somewhere, I put the purse between my feet and clutched. <laughs> I'm sure the Russians knew as much as we did about that aircraft. And he asked me to get married at Easter time. And I am thinking, oh, good. June wedding. So in my mind, I am planning wedding. And he tells me he has already made the plans and everything arranged for May 15th. I said, I want June. <laughs> no, May 15th. Why May 15th? opening a pickerel season. <laughs> Whole first year of my marriage was spent fishing. I have all his trophies.
Isn't that cute? My mom gets um, a Writer's Digest every month, and there are contests in there, and she has been submitting uh, articles for quite a while, eh? And poems. And now that she can't really use her um, computer as well as she used to, uh, she dictates it to me. So this one, Mom, is the stories of the village of Harmony, and that's where you grew up, right? So she has, you know, are you prepared for a disaster, which I'll read, and spring, and the seventh moon, and then, yeah, and then she has one dog and dog breeding of dogs. So she's, she's written about her, her loves and her life, right? The season of fall is near at hand. Chamberlain travels to foreign land. He travels with hat in hand. Peace in our time, his favorite phrase. Peace is gone, Poland ablaze. She wrote this about World War II. And it is now one of the poems that uh, is located in the War Archive in Ottawa. Disaster at Dieppe, more dead on the shore. Britain rallies. Boats of all sizes. I moved off the farm when I was just about 27 years old. You would have been on the farm then during World War II, right? That's where you yeah. spent World War II yes, during that yes, time. Yes. I know when my husband was shot down, he uh, landed in a tree. And when the first house he went to, they were collaborators and threatened to call the Germans. And the next people took him right in. And they had small children, you know, they, they risked, because if the Germans found out, they would shoot them, burn their house down, and that would, that would be it. You only got so much sugar, so much coffee. And we weren't the only ones, there was lots of other people too. During the war years, I worked on caps and detonators. My job was to draw a line around the top of the fire channel and then put a paper cover on top, then pass it through a hole to the next operator. I never knew what she did, because we were not allowed to talk. He rode into Paris on the back of a, of a turnip truck. They were hidden in a, an abandoned cosmetic factory by a Paris policeman. Finally, they got a guide who would take them through the Pyrenees. I turned yellow on my skin, tetra poisoning, and they transferred me to General Motors on war work. And I worked on the Lancaster bomber that was going to end the war. Okay, so I'll open the door. Oh boy, it's warm out here. You can go down there. Yeah. Okay. They're very nice, the flowers, eh? The pots. What were some of the challenges you faced as an adult? When I had a family, I had to look after her and the other one. <laughs> that was a challenge at times. Yeah. yeah. So you were trying to raise kids and your husband was unwell, so how did you manage that? I'm still here. And then you've been single, you, hadn't, you never remarried or anything? No. If you're married once, and you love the guy and all that, 
It's hard to forget him and go back to another person. Stanley watched a big hailstorm come. That storm, he looked up, he'd never seen the sun. It's just a round ball. So how old were you when your husband died? 34, I guess. 33. How old were your kids? I was four. seven. My son was four. Wow, so they were just bitty. Yeah. I went to France after my husband died every year because he'd been a member of the Royal Air Force Escaping Society, which okay. is a group that's formed to look after the, the people who looked after the airmen who were, they were hiding in France during the war. I'm so hard to hear you. Okay, uh, can you say a little bit about when Dad passed away? Then I was lost. I had a son. He had a brain tumor. They gave him three months to a year to live. He died at 28 Eight. Yeah. of cancer. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, very sad. I had my own accounting, and then I, when the children were old enough to be in school and left there, I joined the income tax department. And, and that, how long did you do that for? Till retirement. Wow. That was. And did you retire at 65? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just before I came in here, I had a letter from the federal government asking me if, if I would please come back to work as an administrator. When did this happen? <laughs> Just before I moved in here. <laughs> That was crazy. Well, I don't know. You're. A, a, it takes a pretty incredible person to get a call at 97, asking them to come in and fix the computer system. It takes a pretty stupid person to send out the call. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still doing people's taxes. What they do now, they put them in and wrap their papers all up in a grocery bag. <laughs> so even though they can't see you in person, they bring their taxes in a shopping bag. That's right. And they and hand I'd, them to you and you do them for and them. And then I can... Phone call. My hands and legs don't work as well as they used to, but I can bang out enough to, to keep them singing. You usually like to go to exercise, and and apparently you're very good at it, aren't you, Mom? Oh, I don't know. I just do what I can. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't overstress myself. That's okay. Describe what a regular day looks like from the time you get up in the morning till the time you go to bed now. Time I get up now, go to eat, walk around. There's nothing to do. You got nothing to do. I have to entertain myself. <laughs> so I'm playing, playing cards. Cheating sometimes. <laughs> I like cheating with myself. Yeah, cheating myself. That's oh, the that's, best. That's grand fun. Boring. <laughs> the pandemic has a lot to do with that. Because up to the time I came in and up to the time the pandemic started, I had scouting events going on all the time, singing events. I never had a dull moment, it seemed. Okay, just say what you do during the day. Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> Nothing at all? You have visitors? 
people come to visit you? Yeah. I don't know how to put this, but we have had homes. And after you've had your own home, it is difficult to not have your home. So does it is nothing against this place because they are really good. It is within ourselves that we have seen a better time. Do you enjoy your life now, Mary? Uh, I can't complain. Is there anything you wish was different? No. No? I'm quite contented here. I think my favorite memories is like just having her with my kids and um, she came to Disney World with us. Like, I mean, she was 85. Like, that's a really, really awesome memory. I think I push her a lot to keep active and so, I mean, she's so strong, stoic. I bet you she was 90 and she would walk from her house to my house, so that's about two kilometers. These are happy tears. <laughs> <laughs> You're very lucky to have a daughter like that. Oh, I appreciate it too. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. <laughs> dad, dad, my dad would always, you! <laughs> He'd yell. <laughs> That was good. Are you out of breath? No. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. What would you like everyone to know about what it's like to be 100? Not the most pleasant life. <laughs> well, first, stay happy. Stay happy. What's there really to complain about? The good food, nice people. I'm glad I'm here yet. And still know my family and everything that are still with me. That's all I can wish for. It is a gift. It, it is, is a, a gift. gift. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you lived so long? Well. I guess I was lucky. I never expected to to live this long. I, I, there's no one to whom I can say, do you remember? That's one of the saddest parts, but the fact that I can see my children, my grandchildren and great-grandchildren growing and succeeding, it's wonderful to see all these things. Enjoy the years before you get to 100. Then you've got memories. We ate on the floating restaurant in Hong Kong <laughs> Harbor. Wow. Oh, many people can say that. <laughs> so I heard a rumor about you that you went to the casino in a cab. <laughs> I heard you did it at like 98 that you left here in a cab. <laughs> and they didn't know where you were, is that true? Could be. Could be. <laughs> What's your favorite slot at the casino? Anything, a good machine. A good machine, one that's gonna get your money. <laughs> so I heard that you went out in the cab and then 
and told them that your son was going to meet you there. But he wasn't. He yeah. wasn't. No. Were you being sneaky? <laughs> they had to go they had to go hunting for you. You're yeah. you're like a teenager. Oh, can't act like a teenager. You can't act like a teenager? No. No, why what did you do as a teenager that you can't do now? Well, you got to act at your age. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's no fun. That's the story. That's the story. What do you think a hundred-year-old should act like? Like that? So nothing. You think? If you could go back and relive your life, is there something you'd do different? A lot of things. So can you tell me what those were? Name one. Just say one. It wouldn't work as hard as I used to. On the farm? He's worked hard on the farm. Yes, you did. What would you like to do if you could do anything today? What would you do? Go to his place, look in his garden. And go do a garden with him. That would be lovely. He's got a lovely garden. Can you tell me about any goals you have for the future? <laughs> Just keep alive. <laughs> <laughs> keep br br breathing. No, none, none. Any what? Goals, goals for the future. <laughs> Give me your kick and I'll go out. <laughs> <laughs> No, not really. I would be happy to go. You'd be happy to? Yeah. A hundred, you're not eager beaver to make it to 103. <laughs> it's not up to me, my dear. Anything? And you got any ideas of something you'd like to do? Be what should I do? Well, you could come and visit us. You know, we come to pick you up uh, now that we can again. We could drive out and you could see the old farm place again. Yes, I'm going to piano concert of my grandson. And so what are the ho your hopes for the future for yourself? That my physical condition doesn't get any worse. Because if I, if I lose my mind or lose my physical ability, I would like to be gone. Yeah. I don't think of that. You don't, eh? No. Just one day at a time? Just one day at a time. I hope I can kick the bucket before I get some damn disease or sickness. I don't know on the base. I'm looking for the bucket. <laughs> What are your hopes for the larger, the world, for the community at large? Well, the as a scouter, conservation and the environment are big, big things. We started our environmental studies 150 years too late. And I don't know if we'll ever catch up or not. What are your hopes for the, the world in the for future? For the world? Yeah. I'll let them do their own wishing. Oh, okay. I've done my wishing already. Yeah. What are some of your proudest accomplishments? I don't know. I never thought of them. There's lots of bad stuff and good stuff. Two healthy, loving children. <laughs> Why are you proud of us? Because I love yous. What were some of your proudest accomplishments? You don't know. Raising two nice children. That's my best accomplishment. Oh, you asked so many questions, my dear. 
I don't care who you vote for, but vote. I played in some bar in Ireland, too, I think. <laughs> How did you live to 100? She'll say, well, <laughs> one of the aides said um, that my mom said, lots of sex. <laughs> Is there anything that I have not asked you that you want to tell me about yourself or your life? No. <laughs> You're just happy to be here. Yeah. Well, we're happy to have you here. Thank you. <laughs>